right, so here we are in Ableton. In this video, in the interest of time, I'm gonna really just focus on doing the vocals. But if you choose to download this project file, you're gonna get a bunch of different EQ presets that you can use for different instruments. And if you end up liking them and wanna save them, you just hit this button here. So on my website, you can download this. It's gonna be $2.50, directly supports the channel. And you'll get this project file, as well as an EQ cheat sheet, which has more details about specific terminology and things like that, that some of you guys may be interested in. So go ahead and check that out. Like I said, we're gonna focus on vocals and I'm gonna be using Ableton EQ Q8. One specific thing that I just wanted to mention is the concept of complementary EQing. So in this particular example, the vocals are soloed, so we can hear the details of what we're doing with the EQ. But in general, when you're mixing a track, you're actually going to be listening to a bunch of instruments together, or at least two. Um, so the concept of complementary EQing is EQing one thing so that it fits together with the other, so that it complements it. Or you may want it to stand out more versus the other instrument. So there's a few different schools of thought in that uh, respect, but basically the idea of mixing you want to make sure that you spend some time doing the instrument soloed just so you can kind of hear the details of what you're doing to the EQ but you want to focus on the way that it sounds in the actual mix so that the EQ moves that you're making actually make the instruments sound better together because that's what you want at the end of the day so if we double click here we can zoom into this frequency spectrum so this is super useful for learning and it's also a great workflow for EQing in Ableton so I'm going to walk you through some of the moves that I made on this vocal and just give you a general lay of the land of the EQ spectrum so you can start EQing whatever you need to for your projects to get them to sound really good and in this session you'll be able to actually EQ live kick drum snare bass guitar guitar and synth pad for practice so I think that's really cool I'm not going to go through all these instruments in this particular video so we'll just focus on the vocal for now. Here's what the vocal sounds without anything on it. When I first walked out, I was down on my life. Getting you right, just how I thought you were like. So when we look at the spectrum here, we on the left side have the lows, kind of in the middle we have the mids, and then on the right side we have the highs. Those are the basic kind of terms for the different areas of the frequency spectrum. For vocals, generally speaking, we may want to actually roll off some of those lows. Like we want to kind of roll off that rumble just to get rid of any excess noise in the vocal. We want to leave that space available for bass. So, and that's kind of true for a lot of different instruments too. You may want to experiment with just using a low cut, which looks like this. You can do a more extreme one as well if you click this one but I'm just gonna use this one for now. So we're just removing any rumble that's below 100 hertz that we don't really need. The next area that warrants a lot of attention in vocals is actually the low mids. It's been a trendy mix choice um, in the past, like let's say 20 years to cut a lot of low mids and mids to get like a really smooth sounding vocal. And uh, that's totally a matter of personal preference, and this would totally vary depending on the singer and the mic that you're using and a bunch of different variables. But just as a starting point, what you can do is you can create these, these little bells and find some unpleasant frequencies in this range. So I'll show you what that means like this. When I first walked out, I was down on my life. So I found a frequency that I don't really like, and I'm just pulling that out. And as you can see, I have a very narrow Q or resonance. It's the same thing. Q and resonance and the way that you can control that is you can hold option and you scroll on your trackpad like that to control that. So I'm pulling out three bands of unpleasant frequencies when I first walked out that I don't like at a very narrow Q and I'm taking out about minus 6 dB. I don't feel like going more than minus 6 dB is a good idea because it's gonna start to sound very unnatural. So that's what I'm doing in the low mids to clear out muddiness and boxiness that I find to be unpleasant in the mix. Just gives you a very modern sounding vocal to do this, but it's personal preference. You may not wanna do that. And in some situations, you might wanna boost certain things or whatever, so it just all depends on the, the vocal that you have. Once we move forward from the low mids, we kind of get to this area, which is super dangerous, in my opinion. After 1K and up to like about 5K, we get into like what we call high mids. And there's a million different vague words that people use for little parts of this range, like presence, clarity. It's a dangerous region because it can sound pretty bad if you boost it too much or if you cut it. So I tend to actually leave this B, but... Depending on your vocal, you may have to address that or not. Um, there can be some harshness here, which sometimes you may have to take out. And uh, around here, we have some an area that usually has issues with sibilance. So if I boost this too much, when I first walked out, I was down on my. We get like nasty, unpleasant sibilance. So I usually leave this about where it's at, and then 
way over here, like past 8K, around 10K. That's where you can boost your air. When I first walked out, I was down on my life. So air is just kind of like the super top end. So human hearing can hear generally about to like 20K. So up above 10K, you just get that like crispiness, that the sizzle, the air. There's a lot of vague words once again, but I like to boost this not too much, probably around like plus four. And that's kind of generally what my EQ curve looks like for vocals. So we've addressed the bottom, the, the sub that we're getting rid of. We've addressed any issues in the low mids, if there is any. And once again, you have to listen to the way that it sounds like in the track, because you may want that there, um, or you may not. And then we've addressed any issues here, if there's some harshness or whatever. But for this particular vocal, which is well recorded, I left it flat. But you may or may not want to boost or cut some areas like the in this region with a small Q. And then we've added some air to the top end to get the vocal to kind of stand out to shine above the other instruments. One thing that you need to know about EQing, which is kind of interesting, so there's two uh, categories of, of EQ techniques. One would be subtractive. So here we're doing subtractive EQ, we're removing frequencies that we don't need. When we do that, the actual overall volume of the track is going to decrease. So you have room to boost the gain. Uh, you can do it here or you can do it in another plugin. So just keep in mind when you're subtracting a bunch of stuff, the volume, the perceived volume is going to be lower. So you'll have more headroom to boost it. Whereas when you're adding frequencies, which I'm only doing for the air in this situation, uh, that's actually going to increase the level. So just keep in mind, if you boost a bunch of frequencies, you may want to duck the volume of the actual track because those frequencies are boosting the volume, the perceived volume of everything. So that can be a valuable technique uh, if you want something to sit in the mix to kind of stand out a little bit more. You can boost things in the frequency spectrum and then duck the volume of it. And on, on the other hand, if you uh, cut a bunch of frequencies, you can actually boost the volume of it uh, because it's it's going to sit a little bit lower in the mix just because you've been cutting stuff out. So once again, super contextual. Uh, there's no like EQ template or preset, ironically, that you can use. Uh, but this is just a good starting point. You're going to have to kind of mess around with the exact frequencies to, to match the singer, to match the section of the song and the microphone and all the different variables. So there's infinite variables in a mix and in a recording because it's picking up the sound of the room and then you have the recording and then you have the mix with a bunch of different instruments and stuff that's going to be totally unique to what you're working on so let me know if this helps uh, i appreciate you guys checking out my video check out my website for free and paid downloads and let me know in the comments if you have any feedback or anything like that i want to make my videos better and better so that i can help people produce great music so i'll catch you guys in the next one peace out <music>